Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I have another fun NMR question for you. So we have a molecule with the molecular formula C6H8O2, and we know that this molecule only gives one signal in HNMR spectrum. And we want to know what sort of a structure this molecule might have. So, as in the previous example when I had something similar to that, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to calculate the HDI, the Hydrogen Deficiency Index or Degree of Unsaturation. And we calculate it by taking twice the number of carbons that we have in our molecule, plus 2, minus any hydrogens that we might have, minus any halogens that we might have, plus nitrogens, we ignore oxygens and sulfurs and divide all of that by 2. So in our case here we are going to have 6 carbons multiplied by 2 plus 2 minus we have 8 hydrogens, so I'm going to show that, and we divide it by 2. So that gives me 6 over 2 which gives me 3 degrees of unsaturation. So what does that mean? 3 degrees means that we can have any combinations of pi bonds and cycles that will amount to 3. In other words, that means that I can have 3 pi bonds, a cycle and 2 pi bonds, 2 cycles and a pi bond, or 3 cycles in my molecule. That gives me a huge number of variations of how the molecule might look like, so I'm definitely not going to be brute forcing that, and I will try to see what else I can fix out from the data that I have at hand to see where I might want to go with that. The next piece of information that I'm going to analyze is the only other piece of information that I have in addition to my molecular formula, and that is my HNMR. I know that I have a single signal. So what that tells me is that all of my hydrogens are going to be equivalent between themselves, and all groups containing hydrogens are likewise must be equivalent. Since I have 8 hydrogens in my molecule, there is no way I can have any CH3 groups because there is no way I can make an even number of CH3s that will amount to the 8 hydrogens total. So I can safely say that I have no CH3s in this molecule. Next, when it comes to my CH2 groups, well in this case I can potentially have 4 of those, which means that I will also have 2 carbons as a leftover, which are not going to be connected to any hydrogens. And when it comes to the CHs, if let's say I just imagine that I only have CHs in my molecule, something of that sort. Well, that means that I would have to have 8 of those because I have 8 hydrogens and I simply do not have enough carbons for that, which means that that is not a viable option either, so I'm going to cross it out. So that means that I'm going to be working with 4 CH2 groups and 2 carbons in this molecule. Now, knowing that my molecule has only one HNMR signal gives me an idea that the molecule must be extremely symmetrical. So to make it a little bit easier for me to visualize that, I will draw my 4 CH2 groups in sort of like a very uh, circle-like symmetrical fashion, something like that. I also know that I have two more carbons that are not going to be containing any hydrogens, so those guys should probably be symmetrical as well, otherwise my CH2s are not going to be equivalent, so I will add the other two carbons, one here and another one is right there. Now, that kind of gives me an idea that I am probably looking at a cyclic molecule, so to make it a little bit easier for me to visualize that, I am going to combine that molecule like this into a cycle. Now, cycle takes one degree of unsaturation, so if I'm looking at my possibilities that I've outlined before based on my degrees of unsaturation, I know that 3 pi bonds is probably not going to be the case, and if I have one cycle, then I can potentially have 2 pi bonds, or one cycle and another cycle and a pi bond, or 3 cycles. Well, it is kind of unlikely I'm going to see 3 cycles here, so that is an unlikely possibility. It is also probably not going to be possible to fit another cycle over here, because the leftover that I have is just 2 oxygens, so the uh, case with two cycles and a pi bond is also probably not going to work. So I am left over with two extra pi bonds that I am going to add to this molecule, and the question is, 
where those pi bonds are going to go. But I also have two extra oxygens that I still haven't accounted for. And I have two carbons, which do not have anything sitting on that. So if I add an oxygen on a double bond to one carbon and an oxygen on a double bond to another carbon, I have my molecule. So our final structure is cyclohexane 1,4-dione. So what did you guys think about this question? Were you able to crack it or was it indeed a challenge? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you like this type of questions, let me know about that in the comments below as well. Boop the like button, share this video with your friends and classmates to help promote it so more students can see it, subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.